Systems of equations. Systems of equations means we start with two or more equations and we want to solve so that the same x and y value that solve this will also solve that. There are infinitely many x and y values that solve this one, infinitely many that solve that, but there should only be one pair of x and y values that solves both. When you're solving systems by graphing, you have absolutely no idea where the solution is going to be, so you do want to kind of center your x and your y axes. And we are going to first choose some x and y values that make this true. You can use whatever process you need to to get your x and y values. You can guess and check. You can use algebra. If you pick your x values, you can unwind to find your y values. Myself, I like to run the numbers in my head for something like this. I know that 3 7 makes 21 and if I subtract 1 2 from that I'll get 19. I know that 1 7 makes 7 and I need to add 12 more to get 19 so I'll need 6 2's. 12 plus 7 is 19. I know that 5 sevenths is 35. I need to subtract 16 to get down to 19, so I'll need negative 8 twos. Okay, that's me running numbers in my head. You don't have to use that process. You can use a process like this if it is safer for you. Say you pick your, pick your x value. x is 2. When x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 7 of something equals 19. 4 plus 7y equals 19. Two-step equation, solve for y, right? You're going to end up probably with some decimals that way. But if you are graphing systems by hand, Everything that you get is going to be an approximation. Everything that you do is going to be an approximation. The exact answer uh, is not something that I'm going to be looking for from you if you're graphing by hand. Just a rough estimate. Okay, situation like this, a whole lot easier because y is isolated. And that means that I can just pick some x values like negative 7. 11 and 2 and then solve for y 5 minus negative 7 is 12 divided by 3 is 4 5 minus 11 is negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2 5 minus 2 is 3 divided by 3 is 1 okay I've got an XY table of values that make this true XY table values that make that true. Then, I'm going to graph these guys. They should end up to be in straight lines. I need to get up to x is 11. So I might count by twos. We've got negative 7, 2, 4, 6, 7, 4, 11, negative 2, and 2, 1. Okay, see how these line up in a straight line? That's what should happen. That's why I want you to choose at least three points for each equation on this topic. So you can double check yourself. If they don't line up in a straight line, one of your points, at least one of your points, is wrong. This guy over here, negative 1, 3, 6, 1 negative 8, 5, unfortunately I picked two, uh, <laughs> two lines that are very close to each other. All right, that's going to make it hard for me to know where my lines cross each other, but again, 
for this topic. All I want is a is a general approximation. So it's looking like the point that both of these lines share is somewhere around here. Somewhere in here, I'm going to call it negative 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Negative 14. Seven. Let's call it negative fourteen seven. Somewhere around there. So I'm guessing that this value is is the value that will solve both of these. The only thing that I want you to do after you've done that is check your point. See how reasonable, how close it is. And the way that I'll check that is when x is negative fourteen. 2 times negative 14 plus 7 times 7. Right? I get 21. Right? When I put negative 14 in here and I put 7 in there, I get 21. So we're close to 19. If I do the same thing here, 5 minus negative 14 divided by 3, I get 6.333, which makes y close to 7. Not exactly the x and y that solves both of them, but I'm close to the x and y that solves both of them. That is approximating solutions to systems of equations by graphing.